The Internal Revenue Service would get an $80 billion boost in President Biden's new spending bill. Two former IRS commissioners told you on Government Matters on Sunday that budget boost should be here to stay. John Koskinen's former commissioner of the IRS, a former deputy director for management at OMB, he is writing in the Washington Post with former commissioners Lawrence Gibbs, Fred Goldberg, Margaret Richardson, and Charles Rosati. John, welcome. It's good to see you again. Uh, what did you want to convey to the general population, to members of Congress, that caused you to want to sign on to this op-ed with your former colleagues? Well, what I was really trying to convey is the message I uh, conveyed for the four years I was commissioner. And that was that it's uh, a great workforce at the IRS dedicated to taxpayer service uh, and uh, the fair implementation and execution of the Tax Act. And if you keep underfunding it, uh, things won't go well and it won't be the fault of the employees. And when you underfund an agency for over 10 years, sooner or later, you should expect that things aren't going to work very well. So I wanted to make clear uh, in that op-ed <clears throat> that there are significant challenges uh, awaiting the IRS uh, with all of the new work that they've been asked to uh, engage in, and that you've got to appropriately fund them and staff them if you want it to be an effective agency. You were the only one of these five commissioners, John, that I had spoken to before this past Sunday's Government Matters program. And what struck me about this op-ed was, having not had direct interactions with either of the other four former commissioners, a lot of the themes that are in this piece, as I read the paper, I thought, yeah, he's told me that before. Yeah, he's told me that before. Yeah, he's told me that before. There's not a lot new here, is there? This is what commissioners of the IRS have been asking for for a long time. Is that a fair read on my part? Uh, it certainly is. Uh, led by the Republicans in Congress starting in 2010, uh, the agency for five or six years was not only underfunded going forward, it was had its budget cut. And the net result was uh, we lost about 20,000 employees while I was the commissioner for four years. And I kept trying to get the Congress and the public to understand that at some point you don't do more with less, you do less with less. And while a couple of congressmen growled at me for making that comment, it did seem to be important then and more important now with all the additional responsibilities of the IRS for people to understand uh, you've got to fund the agency appropriately, staff it up with the right number of employees if you want it to run effectively. You and your colleagues write in this piece that changing the, the problems at the IRS happen three ways, information, resources, and technology. I'll put you back in the commissioner's chair for just a moment. This uh, $8 billion a year, as it works out, on average, that the president's proposing, if that comes to you, where do you stack it first, John, among those three priorities? Well, I think you probably don't choose among them. You actually go across the board. Uh, you need to uh, staff up appropriately. Uh, you need to fix technology. There are <clears throat> amazing things can be done if you have a modern uh, technological system. Uh, the IRS is still running software from the 60s. Uh, so you need an effective uh, IT system. You know, while I was there, uh, we worked on providing taxpayers online experiences with the IRS that mirror uh, the experiences they have with their financial institutions and their banks. If you want to, you ought to be able to communicate with the IRS uh, totally online. Uh, you ought to be able to, as you can now, find out the status of your refunds you ought to be able to file electronically, but you also ought to be able to solve problems with the IRS online, and that requires technology. Uh, as you know, talking to uh, <clears throat> Charles and Fred, uh, they've done a detailed analysis showing that if you increased uh, third-party reporting from banks for wealthy individuals and companies about cash flow uh, in and out of their accounts, uh, that additional third-party information can generate um, hundreds of billions of dollars of revenues, not new taxes. These are taxes that should have been paid along the way. That also requires information technology. Uh, but it also, the information, uh, as uh, we've tried to get everybody to understand, uh, when the IRS has third-party information, compliance rates are above 90%. Without third-party information, uh, much like uh, information about what's going through your bank account, uh, the <clears throat> compliance rate drops into the 50% range. So I think it's fair to say that if you increase the third party reporting without anything else, you'll increase significantly the amount of compliance by taxpayers who presently now either aren't filing or are cutting corners or are taking positions they know to be wrong. 
Do you worry that this cash influx and the potential changes will cause an increase in the sentiment that you experienced a lot as the commissioner, which is the IRS is not for us, they're against us, and they're coming to get into my business. How do you, how do you counter that and, and tell the story of uh, legitimate enforcement issues uh, of the, the kind that the, the president says would, the, the IRS would be able to do? Well, again, this is not a question of raising anybody's taxes. This is a question of trying to make sure that everybody pays uh, their fair share, the amount that they're owed. Uh, and there's nothing more corrosive to uh, tax compliance and the implementation execution of the tax code than to have people simply either not filing or filing erroneously, knowingly. Uh, so this is another way to look at it is to the extent you underfund the IRS saying, well, we don't want big government, uh, and you don't allow it to effectively enforce the existing tax code, uh, as I used to say, what you're providing is a tax cut for tax cheats. And I, it's hard for me to imagine uh, anybody's going to say, no, we don't want the IRS to be effective. We want people to be able to um, underpay their taxes or don't pay taxes at all. It just seems to me uh, that's not a tenable position, even though sometimes that seems to be the position people are taking. The, we have about a minute left, John. As you know the old saying in this town, the president proposes, Congress disposes. The president's proposed $80 billion over 10 years for the IRS. What if Congress disposes less but still some? How would uh, the IRS triage where to put that money based on the outline that you uh, talked about a moment ago? Well, again, I think what the IRS would do, first of all, it's important for people to understand <clears throat> the IRS cares a lot about helping people pay their taxes. So uh, the fact that you can't get through very easily on the phone uh, really is debilitating to the enforcement of the tax code. So I think you would try to make sure you hired enough people so that everybody who wanted to could get through on the phone. And then there is low hanging fruit. There are audits out there that when I was there, we knew needed to be done. You didn't have to go hunt for them. We just didn't have the uh, resources. So my sense is um, even if you only got two or three billion dollars a year, it would be a, uh, a great step forward for taxpayer service, uh, fixing the information technology and improving uh, the execution of the tax code, making sure that people pay the amount that they owe. John Koskinen, thanks very much as always. Great to have you back on the program. Thanks for having me.